Good morning, Lisa. How are you doing? Hi, Thomas. Great, thanks. How are you? Great. And Stephen, how are you? Great, thanks, Thomas. How's yep. yourself? Very good. So how is Wisebury, Thompson in Richmond and in Penrith going? Look, they're just kicking along. The market yes. is hot. It's uh, I've started saying to people that we're in a little mini boom at the moment. Um, there's just so much happening at the moment. Stock is a little bit slow coming on though. Yes. I know you warned us last month about that and we really didn't take the advice as well as we should have. So um, we're not seeing the number of properties come up. We're selling more than we've listed, um, but we are still getting new properties. So um, at the moment it's just you know, how much can you get for this one and how much more can we beat the one we sold last week? So it's um, just such a busy time. So this is going to be a dangerous thing. It's like if, if, if you get to a level where the supply is going towards zero, the demand, no matter how high it is, it's going to be zero. Yeah, I mean, if you look at some of the numbers, I mean, in, in Richmond at the moment, there's 31 properties for sale. Yeah. And that was equal now back to what it was when we were in the sort of, you know, 16, 17s in the boom time. We've gone up to as high as 50 in the last couple of years. And, yes. and now we're back to 31 again. Uh, I mean, the whole of the Hawkesbury, which is similar population to Port Macquarie, has 445 properties for sale. Like, that's not a lot. No. Considering a lot of that is land and there's, you know, so it is, yeah, it's really, a, um, I think, a bit of a, a worry for everyone out there and of course you know they were always saying what happens when job keeper 2.0 stops at the way we're going i don't think there's going to be a change because there's such high demand for such a low supply that i think it will just keep kicking on and hopefully it does because i'd hate to see people lose their properties and lose their houses because of that at least if they do need to sell we are in a very good market to do that in penrith um, last month there were 29 properties sold Right. Um, and that's a pretty consistent, in 2019 there were 40 sold. And it's funny, I noticed even with the Port Macquarie stats, in 2010, so we go back 10 years ago, there were only 12 sales. And even the Port Macquarie numbers, they were half back to 10 years ago. So obviously whatever was happening 10 years ago, all the markets, I mean Richmond had seven sales in October. Um, but they only had three back in 2010 for the same month. So it, it just seems, and I can't remember 2010 because that was so like 10 years ago, yeah. um, but where we must have really been struggling to sell at that stage because every suburb, the sales are, are, are half or less than they were this same month. So. Yeah, that was right after the GFC. Which we thought didn't really affect us when we were real estate agents, GFC was, what, what GFC? But obviously yeah, when was, you look at the stats now... You were looking now, more like KFC. But <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I mean, there, you know, Penrith's currently, there's 156 on the market in Penrith itself. Yes. And there's 801 in the whole of the Nepean area. Wow. Um, that's and that number, hasn't though. seemed to have really dropped. That's been always consistently around that sort of eight 850 type mark. So... I think we're seeing more stock come on and there's certainly from an office point of view, Penrith's outlisting Richmond at the moment um, because there's just more opportunities out there, yeah. H hence why the stock level is greater. Um, and I think we're finding prices are probably that little bit tighter and stronger in the Hawkesbury than the Nepean, uh, but we're still getting good prices in both. Yeah, are finance or getting finance getting easier or not? It's a great time for people to be looking at their finances and restructuring their loans because they can definitely save some money right now. There's yep. some really good deals out there. Um, some of the banks are even offering cashbacks as well. So um, it's definitely an opportunity that um, homeowners and landlords can take advantage yeah. of. Yeah, that's a great opportunity. Isn't Especially, it? I mean, one of our teams just been approved for a loan and I mean, she's picking it up at 2.49% fixed for three years. And you think, really? I mean, when I bought my first property, um, it was 19%. Yeah. So I think no one's got a concept of what it is. So, um, but I think, at, you know, the banks are getting a lot easier though, aren't they too? I'm finding that we're not having to go into as longer cooling offs. A lot of the banks are managing to turn around in sort of five to seven days now, as opposed to needing sometimes up to 15. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the person though too. I think the, the best thing is if you're out to buy a property today, be prepared. Get in and get your pre-approval, know yeah. where your finances stand. and No point looking today and going, I haven't even spoke to the bank and then trying to do it because the, the owners now have a little bit more choice when they're selling. Do I go with that person or do I go with this person? And it could be 
the difference of one needs a 15 day cooling off and one's cashed ready to go and can get it done in five. So yeah. I think it's preparation. I know you're having some good success with the people you've been talking to, yeah. but I think even that's the chance to refinance. Yeah. Don't worry about buying or selling. If you've got a home loan and you're paying more than two and a half percent, they should definitely be talking to Lisa and, and getting off to Wise Refinance and, yeah. and, and really getting a better deal. So who's in charge of the recruiting here for the two offices? Uh, that, that would be me. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll put my hand up for that. So how, how's it going? Because I, I'm here, I'm seeing too, because I, I'm, I'm doing a few interviews for, for offices, and the caliber of recruits has risen over the last two or three months. Look, I would have to agree with that. Yeah. Um, I think because there is more people out there looking and people coming from different fields. I can't say that we've actually had any success from any of those people yet. I think a lot of them are out there shopping around a little bit more and thinking, all right, I was a travel agent. Maybe I should try real estate. Maybe I should try, you know, manager of the local Dan Murphy's. I'm not sure. So I'm not really getting the commitment from them at this stage. We've got a couple of trial days next week with some what I think are going to be quite good people. Yes. Um, one of them we picked up from someone we sold a house to and said, you know what, <laughs> now that she's got the house and already settled, stop doing what you're doing, come work for us. Um, and the other one's a, a young girl who just wants to talk about real estate. She's only 17 and uh, if she can do what she needs to do next week in a trial, I think she's gonna make her dream come true and become a real estate agent. So, oh, wow. um, so nice. there is definitely a lot more people out there looking. Some of them, of course, are still on sort of job keepers and payments like that and they're not too game to make that big jump yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's like maybe talk in the new year, but yeah, we're all looking. So. Now, two days ago, the budget came up with something new. We're going to get rid of the stamp duty and we're going to look at replacing it with some kind of land tax, right? What's your opinion on that? And is that going to affect the property market, you reckon? I think the idea of um, getting rid of the stamp duty has come up a few times previously. Yes. And it's always stayed. So I, I myself personally can't see the stamp duty being abolished. Right. So I think they will have to replace it with something. Because It'll be replaced, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, it's the biggest income producer for New South Wales as a state. It's the only thing that puts us to actually, I think, the biggest income producing state in Australia. So if we don't have it, what are they going to do? Whether they increase your car insurance or they you know, put a tax on you, an annual tax on you for buying a property, they're going to have to replace it somehow. So. I, I think as you say, I mean, in, in our lifetime, we've heard it brought up many, many times. It could happen, it might not. It's only really out there for a draft opinion until March anyway, so it's not happening anywhere in the next four or five months, and then they'll decide sometime next year if it's even gonna happen. Uh, it could be a good vote winner, possibly, but what's the cost gonna be on the other end and who else is gonna end up paying, you know? I mean, it could be, People who don't even buy real estate might have a bill increased on them now to cover what the state needs to recoup. So yeah. um, I think we should be careful. Um, I I'm certainly wouldn't, if I was buying today, I wouldn't be holding off on the hope that stamp duty might be there because the way the market's kicking at the moment, the 10 to $30,000 you might save on stamp duty will be surpassed by the 50 plus thousand dollar increase the property you're looking at today could have over the next six months anyway. So I think it's a great concept and if it can genuinely help people it would be nice but if it's take off one and give to another um, and charge somewhere else it's certainly not going to work. You have a good story to share? Some I, gossip? I do have a couple of oh, stories that I'd all like right, to share. All right, all right. Um, I love the gossip. <laughs> no, I've been um, involved in organising the Tenant of the Month program, which I think we started roughly about six months ago. Yes. Um, and that's just been embraced by the winners, the Tenant of the Month. They're just so happy to receive that um, acknowledgement of their effort in keeping their rent paid and, you know, presenting their property so well. Um, and the gentleman that we actually had in our office yesterday, he's an, an elderly gentleman. He lives on his own. Yes. Um, he lives in a complex and, you know, he's so kind that he actually brings all the bins in for everyone in the complex, you know. Oh. So he's going out of his way to do the right thing for his own property, but he's actually supporting all the elderly tenants as well and bringing the bins in. And he was just blown away that, you know, we had him in the office, all the girls were around him, he loved that. Um, you know, we had chocolates for him and a voucher for Food Coma, our local pizza cafe. 
and he was just so excited to be able to take his sister out for lunch on Monday and you know pass on his good fortune to her who also supports him. So that's really lovely. And how long has he lived there? 12 years. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, well, he hasn't amazing. lived in that particular unit for 12 years, right. but he's been our tenant for 12 years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's so. amazing, you know, that, that small kind of uh, act of kindness, it goes a long way for him to, to be able to now take his sister out yeah. and talk about it. I'm sure he's going to yeah. tell a lot of people about well, this. Well, he was excited to get on the phone and tell his son to, you know, get onto Facebook. I'm going to be on Facebook. So, yeah, it was, was really nice to have him in the office yesterday. What a great story. Yeah. But do you know what, when you were talking about him taking out all the bins for everyone, I, I kind of thought, ah, oh, an older version of Steve Thompson here. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's nothing new for me. Mm. All right, give me a gossip I don't know. Gossip you don't know. Oh. <laughs> So what's the next story? Well, well, you know we have little Nessie in the office now, our um, little 12-week-old toy poodle puppy. Yes. So that's, um, yeah, that's really exciting. And everyone that comes to the front door is like, oh, is that a puppy? So it's really so good. So what, what's the idea behind it, Lisa? Because I, I know you've been a big driver of, uh, of having Ness. So what, what is well, her title, what's the idea? Well, her title is actually the um, Staff and Client Relations Officer. Yes. And, yeah, it's just... Fun, loving, light-hearted little ball of fluff that walks into the office every day and she goes around and meets everybody. Um, one of the girls came to work one day last week, was a little bit upset, you know, for personal reasons. Yes. And, you know, we just had a talk. She embraced Nessie and it just, you know, brightened her day and moved That's forward. Amazing. So it was, it was just, it's That's lovely. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I think what, one, what day this week was it? Tuesday. Um, we had other things on, so we actually dropped her off to my mum and dad's for the day. Yes. And the, that afternoon, the girls are saying, is Nessie, Nessie coming back tomorrow? We've missed <laughs> yeah. her. Where is she? So she's really okay. become part of the family. And But, I mean, we've had her out to every sold by champagne sh photo shoot that we've done. She she meets all the new tenants as well as when they have their big lease by photo shoot. So she's just going out and I mean, you know, we did one in Bowen Mountain the other day and I mean, that little girl, Hannah, would not let go mm, of Nessie. She loved and her. she's there and I mean, she, you know, she's starting high school so it's one of the reasons they've moved to the area and she's taking pictures and putting them on Instagram and TikTok mm. and who, who, who knows what she's doing, but you know, her and her and Nessie and so it just made it. I yeah, mean, it was a fun nice. event, but she was there with mum and dad. I mean, buying a house was probably not the most exciting for her. Mum and dad are drinking champagne and she's thinking, you know, I should be drinking that. I'm like 13 now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, suddenly <laughs> she was involved in it as well. So I think she just, you know, And I think it has everyone. brought the team closer. Like we all have something common that we all love, you yeah. know, so it's yeah. nice. Apart from work and life, yeah, of course. You, you've got, you're actually the jack of all trades, Lisa. I, I, I look at you and I see it's not just about the duties that you do, running the finance side and, and organising you know, things around uh, client satisfaction or, or making sure that people are happy as tenant or landlord. But you're also working on the team. You, you just finding ideas. I mean, after Nessie, is there another second Nessie? Or, or, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, ju I'm just thinking, uh, is this like the beginning of some kind of story? Or what, what's no. happening? No, I, I think because one Because you moved him from, from cats too. He, he used to be just a cat man. Oh, no, we have cats at home. We still have cats. Oh, so. Is it? I mean, I've yeah. never seen him like hug a dog. I mean, he's, he's only two cats. <laughs> uh, no, we, we have cats at home. Three cats. But yeah, I don't know what the next plan is for mm. that, but... She certainly keeps me organised as well, you know, like, and and I think it's good to have someone, the support I have behind me, because if I'm not in a good mind, yeah. that's going to affect our whole team. And we can't afford to do that. I mean, imagine wasting the pay of 12 people because I'm in a bad mood for a day. Yeah. So, you know, Lisa's got the ability to pull me out of the bad mood, but she's got the ability... And not that I'm in a bad mood often either, no. but she can pick up and sort of go, hey, you, you know, how about you do this? Or comes up with a better idea or solution. And, and I think that's great why we work together, you know. I've really enjoyed like work coming in and working with the girls and seeing the dynamics of the office and how we can sort of work together. I mean, everyone has always worked really hard and everyone is flat out getting everything done. But... I wanted everyone to be able to work together and sort of care for one another and sort of have a closer knit group between the girls. Yeah. And I think that really is starting to come through. So. Yes, I, I, can, I can feel it too. Yeah. I mean, the, the few times I've been in there, I, you can just sense it. Yeah. Yeah, it. There's something that's being built for the moment. Yeah. So I think it's going to be great because if this podcast could go out to your landlords or tenants, if they want 
a, a career in real estate now, or if they know of someone wishing for a new career, they should really give you guys a call. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're we're happy to talk to anyone. You know, we obviously we have our standards of people that we want, but you know, anyone as I say we saw someone and said, and we couldn't change her career while she's buying a house because it would have upset a home loan. But now the house is ready to be rented. She's lived there for half the year. It's like, okay, n now come come work with us. And that's yeah. the sort of, we're always on the outlook for more people. I mean, we've got plenty of desks and plenty of more room in our office, in, in both our offices, Penrith and Richmond, that we could make room for more people if we need to. So um, no, we're certainly on the outlook. And, and I think more people to join our little family. You know, mm. I think that's yep. the fun part. You're not just coming to work. And even, you know, when I spoke to the, one of the girls I was talking to, she did say, she said, oh, you know, you're just like one big family. Do you think I'll fit in? Yeah. I'm sure you will, you know, yeah. so. Um, I, I think when you said earlier uh, you've got your standards, I, I, I just want to precise. What, what you want is to make sure that people really are fitting the real estate because you can be a very nice person but not be cut out for real estate. That's right. And, and your job is not to eliminate them. Your job is to recognize whether they're going to be happy doing the job or not. It's because this is a career. This is a long-term kind of thing. I mean, it's no point doing it for a week and then afterwards uh, regret walking away from something you were doing that you liked. That's right. And it really is a lifestyle because yeah. real estate's not nine to five. You right. know, things do happen after hours because that's when it's convenient for buyers or landlords or tenants. Yes. Things happen on the weekend, so it's not a nine to five job, so it is a lifestyle job. But just to give um, anyone that is interested in applying for a job or um, work with us, yes. just to give you a bit of an idea of the type of person that you'll be working for and with, um, I have a good news story on Stephen. Oh yes. So we were recently working, or Stephen was working with a buyer who is Stephen's previous buyer and landlord. And to be in the car and have um, this gentleman say to Stephen that it is a privilege to do business with him and how honourable he is when doing business um, well, your entire life, I think that's such great feedback, you know, yeah. and that's the standard of um, business and the way that Stephen conducts himself. So I yeah. think that's amazing. Yeah, his, his, his level of connection with people is very, very high. So from landlord, tenant to... to, to sellers, uh, even buyers, uh, you, you, they're in good hands. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a, what, a, what a good plug. I mean, what a great plug. I'm not <laughs> lucky Stephen. But thank you for that. Have you got a story like no, we, about me? He we, doesn't we, like <laughs> stories about himself. We, <laughs> that's why I have to go quiet. And just, but look, we did forget our property management stats because, yes. I mean, property management is I a huge, get to that. huge part of our business. So um, in the month of October, we leased 10 properties. Yes. Um, currently, we only have 12 available on our list and four of those properties are vacant. The rest you can't even move into just yet because of there. So we're averaging about seven days vacancy at the moment. Yes. Um, and that's not days on market. That's from the day it becomes empty to the day someone goes in. A lot of our properties are still, if tenants are willing to let us in while they're still living there, we're renting a lot of those properties out before uh, they even come available. I mean, Richmond alone has only got 19 properties for rent. Penrith's got 151. Yeah. But of course, Richmond's only got a population of two and a half thousand. Penrith's got itself a whole lot more than that. Yeah. So um, rentals are still in high demand. Um, rents have been going up slightly as well um, because of that supply. The landlords, you know, get that bonus for themselves. But certainly there's a lot of tenants out there looking. There's a lot of good quality tenants out there looking. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for us, we've actually a lot of our own tenants have decided to move in house and, and come to us and say, listen, we're thinking of upgrading or downgrading. What else have you got? Which is something that I think 10 years ago, you very rarely saw. So I think our work over the last few years on working with tenants and, yes. and, and making them feel humans. Um, part of the family. And, you know, part of the family and just that just because you're renting doesn't mean there's something wrong. It, renting's a big part of our business that they're now coming and having that I think years ago, you never wanted to tell your landlord you were thinking of moving in case he kicked you out. Yeah. Now they feel comfortable to come and discuss their future real estate and there's something nice. that makes us mm. proud. Very nice. Well, thank you very much for November report. Thanks, Talk to Thomas. you soon. Thank you. See, See you next time. See you, Stephen. Bye.